you welcome today we are going to be looking at stroke stroke having one of the leading conditions in the healthcare sector that uh, many patients have suffered and died so we are going to look at it and we are going to look at it in depth today so we are going to start with what is stroke it's where the blood rich in oxygen cannot reach the brain cell so when this happens, the brain cells or the brain tissue is going to die after some time. So what causes stroke? What can limit the blood flows to the brain cell or to the brain tissue? Blockage of the arteries or blockage of the vessels that take blood to the brain tissue can get blocked. So when they get blocked, the brain cells or the brain tissues cannot receive the adequate blood to carry on the brain function because there is a blockage within the wall of the arteries. So therefore, it can lead to stroke or death of the brain cell or brain tissue. So another one, another cause is bleeding within the brain. And bleeding within the brain, that is the blood vessels or the capillaries or the arteries that take the blood to the brain tissues or brain cells can get ruptured. And when it gets ruptured, there's a leakage of blood within the brain. So therefore, the brain tissues will not receive adequate blood supply or oxygen demand so there will be a death of tissues in the brain so therefore you're going to lead to stroke so we have two types of stroke we have the ischemic stroke and the hemorrhagic stroke so the ischemic stroke is a blockage of the arteries within the brain that carry blood to the brain that leads to cell death and also hemorrhagic stroke is a leakage of blood within the brain that leads to least oxygen demanded by the brain that will also cause stroke so in today's uh, lecture we going to look in depth with ischemic stroke like we said an ischemic stroke occur when the blood supply to the brain is interrupted or reduced so when there's an interruption of blood supply to the brain or reduce, preventing the blood tissues from getting the adequate oxygen or nutrients to carry on the brain function is referred to as a ischemic stroke. So like here in this diagram, you are seeing here, there is a normal arteries that carry blood to the brain. So once the artery have no blockage within the wall of the artery, the oxygen demand in the in the blood supply to the brain is going to be as normal, right? But here you see here this is a blocked artery, means that it's is reducing the blood flow within the brain. So therefore, the oxygen demand by the brain cell here is going to get reduced. And what after some time or a period of time, the brain is going to get maybe cell death because there is no much oxygen supply to the brain. But what actually causes stroke or what causes ischemic stroke, right? Because we already tell you about hemorrhagic stroke and ischemic stroke. But what causes ischemic stroke? One has to do with embolism. Embolism is a clot of blood within the body that breaks down into smaller clots and moves upward through the capillaries or through the atriums or that moves through the atriums and go directly to the brain and get a brain clot. So an example is a clot that is within the heart. So maybe the problem could be a patient with the valve problem, heart valve problem or artery fibrillations. So patients that have artery fibrillations, 
we had a clot of blood and these clots going to break down into smaller clots and move into the arteries to block the water of the arteries that travels into the brain and stop the blood from flowing. That's one. Two, we have what we call tribulosis. Tribulosis are clot within the walls of the artery. Like now you see this clot here is tribulosis. So it means that this clot was built up within the wall of the arteries here. So therefore it's going to limit the flow of the blood directly to go to the brain. We need to look at the clinical manifestation of an ischemic stroke patient. But before understanding the clinical manifestation of ischemic stroke patient, we quickly have to look at the anatomic and physiology of the brain, right? That will give us an insight on what are some clinical manifestations of an ischemic stroke patient. The one has to do with the brain. The brain has a cerebrum. The brain is uh, structured as a cerebrum. So the cerebrum has two hemispheres, and these two hemispheres have what we call four lobes, right? It have four lobes. We have the frontal lobe, we have the temporal lobe, and then we have the optical lobe. So these viral lobes are responsible for different function. So like for example here, the, the frontal lobes. In the frontal lobe, the frontal lobe is responsible for what we call thinking, it's responsible for uh, feeding, it's responsible for planning, and it's responsible for personal last thing. And you also look at the temporal lobe. In the temporal lobe, it controls speech. The temporal lobe is responsible to control speech and other things. But here at the, uh, at here you see the cell balance. So in the cell balance here, it controls movement, body movement and coordination. So it's going to do that. So if a patient is, a, is, is presented to you in a facility, with any of these signs and symptoms or any of the clinical manifestations we are going to display, you're going to have a broad insight as which part of the brain have been affected. So, some clinical manifestations of a patient presenting to you or some signs and symptoms of patients with uh, what we call eczemic stroke. They are sudden numbness or weakness of the face and arm legs especially on one side of the body why we are saying one side because it's not a paresis paresis is when the total body become paralyzed but this occur on the one side of the body so we have a sudden confusion the patient is going to come up with a sudden confusion the patient is have, we're going to have what we call trouble in speaking the patient is also going to have trouble in seeing on one or both sides of the eye the patient is going to have trouble in walking, uh, dizziness, loss of balance or coordination, and several headaches with unknown cause. This clinical manifestation or sign and symptom will show depends on which part of the brain was affected. It, for example, was a temporal loop. In the temporal loop, what's going to happen is that the temporal loop is responsible to coordinate speech. To coordinate speech so if the artery that carry blood to the temporal loop was blocked definitely your patient is going to you know have a sign and symptom of speech disorder if it was a cerebrum that the the artery there was blocked or having some issue patient is going to be presented with lack of body coordination movement issues it's when you see the patient dragging one hand or one, one limb or one arm will be like literally dead and the patient will have nothing doing. Depends on where it was affected. So now let's look at case study of eczema stroke. So we have this patient in joint and at the age of 68 in that male and medical history of hypertension. So the patient already have hypertension and type 2 diabetics. The patient is a smoker already. So the clinical manifestation means the chief complaint that brought the patient to the facility. John presented to the emergency departments with a sudden onset of weakness in the right arm and leg. Sudden speech 
and frontal lobe on the right side. A symptom begins approximately two hours before arrival. So this is a this is sign and symptom that brought a patient to the facility. About the clinical manifestations of HCM stroke, where we saw numbness and weak weakness in arms and legs. And now we are also seeing this patient, John, is presenting with weakness in arms and legs. So we also all of what we call objective finding, means we send the patient for laboratory tests and all that thing. The range of diabetes is as high as well. So based on the objective and subjective findings, patients were diagnosed with what we call ischemic stroke. So the patient was diagnosed with ischemic stroke. So because the patient, after running on all these investigations, we found out that this patient had what we call ischemic stroke. Now, we jump quickly to lifestyle modifications because we cannot do medication plan for you or, for, or in this video because uh, to every patient, there are different underlying factors. That's one thing. There are different genetic alter. There are different responses to drugs. And there are different things that will lead to the condition. And there are different complications of every patient. So until you see your doctors to advise you on what to do and what not to do, we cannot provide you a medication. But the patient had a medication plan. So we'll go with lifestyle modification. Lifestyle modification has to do with if you have been diagnosed or even before being diagnosed, what are some of those things you can do to prevent ischemic stroke or keep doing to improve your condition, right? So we say the person should have choice of healthy food and drinks. That is one thing. Choosing healthy meals, the patient should be able to eat maybe healthy food and get healthy drinks to prevent them from getting stroke or to help them to improve their situation. Keep a healthy weight. That's another lifestyle modification. Having overweight or obesity may increase your risk of stroke. We know people who, most people who are obese usually have high cholesterol level. So what happens when your cholesterol is high there will be a, a cholesterol crumbs that's going to affect that's going to get clot into the arteries that will lead to ischemic stroke so always try to you know maintain your obesity level do exercise regularly to help to dilate your blood vessels that there will be easy flow of blood through the arteries and if you are a smoker you have to quit smoking if not you stop smoking completely so another lifestyle modification if you're alcoholic you have to stop alcohol intake and also check your cholesterol level like i spoke about it already cholesterol stain those that are done with cholesterol they stain a high chance of getting what we call ischemic stroke control your bp if you have already been diagnosed of high blood pressure try to check it and take your medication on a daily basis and also control your diabetes. So thank you ever so much for following us. In our next video, we're gonna be talking about other diseases here and what are the signs and symptoms and what you can do to prevent yourself from getting these diseases. Thank you so much and I'm gonna catch you in the next video. Until then, bye.